Hey guys, what's up? This is it. This is the video you've all been looking forward to. Um, when I say all, I mean maybe three people, me included. And um, yeah, right now I'm filming on the um, ZV-E10, which I just purchased not long ago. I traded my ZV-1 to fund this camera. And uh, I kind of have buyer's remorse, to be honest, um, because I really love my ZV-1 and you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. So um, I'll explain why later on, why I think the ZV-1 is probably superior to this uh, camera. But um, there are some aspects of this camera that are, are a lot better. But um, I think overall, if you're looking for just a sim What the hell is going on here? What is this? It's like the Asian Superman or something. Let me put that. Jesus, that's embarrassing. But anyway, uh, what was I talking about? Um, yeah, the, uh, the ZV, the ZV E10 is, um, is a good camera. I actually don't remember what I was talking about. I was so distracted by this hair thing, but, uh, I'm just going to keep pushing along and, uh, we're just going to keep going. Um, yeah, ZV E10 is a great camera. Um, the reason why I traded it in as well is because I have a bunch of APS-C lenses. I have an A6500 and I wanted something that was more stable. It was more compact something that you can vlog with easier. And the ZV-E10 seemed like uh, it was the perfect solution. Um, like I said before, like a couple years ago, I bought the ZV-1 and I thought that was great, but there was a couple things that I didn't like about it. The crop was too much and um, I found the image quality to be a bit softer than the, uh, the, the A6500, which I didn't like. And when I heard that the ZV-E10 had the same sensor, same everything as the A6500, I thought that'd be perfect. That's the perfect solution. I like the sharpness of it. Um, and with the interchangeable lenses, I can really control the, the focal distance. And I thought it was, it was gonna be amazing. But what I found out was that it's a lot more finickier. Like it's not as noob friendly. And I am a noob. I don't really know anything about cameras, shutter speeds and apertures or anything like that. Um, so, well, I do know about them. I just, in, a, in the very basic sense. So that's why I bought this camera and you would have probably purchased this camera for vlogging. I can't see why you would purchase this camera for anything else. There's a lot of cameras out there that are, that are more capable if you, were, if you want to take pictures of wildlife or if you want an interchangeable lens camera. Uh, there's so much out there that's, that's probably more suitable for, uh, than the ZV-E10. So let's just say, let's just go under the assumption that this is, this is the vlogging camera. This is the vlogging setup that, you're, that you've invested in and you're looking for that lens. So. I just did an unboxing of the Rokinon. I just I just got it yesterday. Um, the Rokinon 12 millimeter f 2.0 sounds amazing. It's a prime lens, so it's it's kind of fast. Would I have preferred that f 2.0 to be f 1.4? Of course, we all want that. We all want uh, to duplicate that Sigma 16 mil uh, look, right? Which I have on right now. So um, I have this right here, and I'm going to be comparing it to the Tamron 11 to 20 millimeters f 2.8 a lens which I've had for maybe I would say about a month now and I've, I've been using it um, and I like it I like it a lot there are a couple issues that I don't like about it uh, first off is that it's a bit heavy I didn't like that it made my arm really tired and um, secondly it's not as fast as a 2.0 f 2.0 it's um it's f 2.8 I don't even know if that's gonna make much of a difference but that's what this test is gonna kind of determine so yeah as you can see um, what is it this one has a I'm gonna put lens caps on them so that's a clearer indication of the size difference As you can see I don't have product showcase mode on right now and I'm shooting right now with no picture profile because I think a lot of you guys, if you are just beginning, you're not gonna know anything about picture profiles. So this is how you're gonna be using it. For the first test, what I wanted to do was, um, because this is only a 12 mil and this is 11, I'm gonna try to replicate a 12 mil on this, 12 mil on this, and they're both gonna be at f2.8. And what I wanna see is, I wanna see any, um, the color science, which one has the better color science. And then on the next test, I want to actually use, uh, I want to shoot this Rokinon in the best case scenario, which is I want to shoot it with uh, the aperture wide open at f2.0 to see if that looks more pleasing. 
at the end of the day, what I want to do is I want to help you guys determine what lens is, uh, is uh, right for you. So keep in mind, this is half the price of this. But with this, it's more versatile. You get the zoom. You get 11 millimeters or anything in between 11 and 20 millimeters. But what you're losing out there is the f-stop. It's um, not as fast. So with that, uh, what that means is for low light situations, the Rokinon is going to be a lot better, more suitable. So the lower that number, like f2.0 versus f2.8, the, the smaller that number, the better it is in low light. And the smaller that number, the more blurred um, the background is going to be. So if you like that creamy, blurry bokeh background, you want to go with an aperture that's very low or a lens that has a very low aperture. That's why the Sigma um, 16 mil at 1.4 looks so awesome. Everything's kind of blurred in the background and the closer I move, the more blurrier it gets and the bigger my nose gets. And who the hell gets acne at 45? Like, what is going on with me? It's, I'm a mess. But anyway, this is going on, uh, this has gone on for way too long. Let's get to the comparison. So right now I'm filming on the Rokinon, 12 millimeters at f2.8. So when I switch over to the Tamron, I'm gonna replicate the same, the exact same settings. Right now, the thing I'm concerned about, or most curious about, I should say, is the colors, how that differs. So my arms are outstretched right now at 12 millimeters with active stab on. So when you turn on active stab on this camera, it crops in like 40%. It's crazy how much it crops in. So, but you need it because you need that stability for this camera because the stab on this camera is just absolutely terrible. It's one of the things that I don't like about it. Is there a difference in color? But what I like about this lens here, the, uh, the Rokinon, is that it's a lot smaller. So if you're kind of shy in public, you don't want to be carrying around a giant camera, this lens might be the one uh, you might want to gravitate towards. Okay, so I'm back on the Rokinon. This is no handicap at all. Uh, F-stop completely wide open at f2.0. The image should be brighter. There should be more bokeh in the background. Um, but it's at 12 millimeters. That's the... That's as wide as it could ever get. It's a prime lens, so it doesn't have zoom like the Tamron. So it's not as versatile, but this is it. All right, I'm gonna interrupt myself right here because this is really interesting I found. Look at the lighting as I go around my table. Look how well the Rokinon handles low light. The f2.0 is really coming in handy at this, uh, at, with this comparison. Look at as I go around here, it's, the the colors uh, it's it's so much more pleasing i find and i also noticed the background blur is a lot more uh, prominent on the uh, footage on the top which is the rokinon the bottom is uh, tamron obviously so another thing to consider when you're considering these lenses uh, is the low light for sure the when i'm fully lit you can't really tell much of a difference but uh during low light situations as you can see here I think it's a huge difference. So, yeah, very interesting. Very cool. And yeah, the the bokeh, the blurry background is is a, is is slightly blurrier on the top footage, which adds to um which makes it more cinematic, I find. So, both very important things to keep in mind. All right, so I'm back. Some very interesting findings I find um so all in all, both lenses are very similar. Similar focal length, similar f-stop, similar everything. Um, one edges out the other in some aspects and vice versa. So I think at the end of the day, it's gonna be what you're gonna be using this lens for. If you're a photographer, I would definitely go with the Tamron. Uh, I actually didn't test that out. I just wanted to use this um, experiment as a test for a vlogging situation. And I think some of the findings are interesting. The, um, the Rokinon handles low light really well. That's the biggest thing that I found out. Color wise, they're very similar. Like I can trick my mind into thinking that one is slightly more orange than the other. Um, I think the Rokinon seems to be a little bit more warmer, which I actually love as well. But then I'll look at it again and some parts of the footage are like, I'm thinking the Tamron is more warmer. It's so strange. But yeah, this is just a vlogging test. This is 100% video. Uh, as far as photography, I don't know. Uh, from 
what I've heard, the Tamron is a much better camera for that. There's less uh, color fringing on the edges. It's more sharper in the middle. Um, overall, it's just a better lens for photography and you get that zoom range as well, 11 to 20 millimeters. So if you're a photographer, um, there's no reason why you would pick that or there's no, there would be no reason why you'd pick the Rokinon or over the Tamron. But in this situation, uh, for vlogging, if you're looking for the ultimate vlogging lens for the ZV-E10, um, I think the Rokinon wins out, especially it being cheaper by like half. It's crazy. So I know I sounded really serious in my comparisons. Um, anytime I'm trying to sound intelligent, I kind of I, I kind of clam up and I don't know what to say. So um, yeah, very interesting. I think for me, I'm going to end up keeping them. I hate returning things. Uh, I can't return the Tamron now because it's been too long. It's been over a month. The best I could do with this is, is sell it. Um, but the Rokinon is ace. Like as far as vlogging, my God, this thing is awesome. I was really surprised with the low light performance on this guy. Very good. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, with my limited knowledge, that's all I can speak of. To be honest, this is my best this is my best shot at, at a comparison. This is my best effort. This is me putting my best foot forward. So, and this is, I mean, that's all I can come up with. But if you have any questions or if you want to see me do any more comparisons with this, uh, with these two lenses, like maybe, maybe I'll go outside and test it out or whatever like that, please let me know in the comments section. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this channel, quite honestly. It's, um, it's it's really a channel for for me just messing around like if i have family if i if i went on a family vacation or something like that and i and i shot some nice stuff um i would put it on this channel um or like maybe unboxings love iPhones or some stupid things like that but uh, i have another channel it's an art channel i'm an artist i teach art um but uh yeah this channel is just another another channel it may become nothing we'll see but um yeah it, it doesn't matter anyway. But anyway, I'm going to go. I don't want to talk forever. I have a meeting very soon. But if you like this video, yeah, give it a thumbs up for sure. And uh, if I helped you out, that's, that's amazing. Um, that's great. Okay, bye. See you guys.